Hey everybody. Today we're going to do something interesting, I hope. I've been experimenting with a bunch of 3D scanning apps. I upgraded from my iPhone 11 to the iPhone 13. Not that I was displeased with the iPhone 11, it's just that the iPhone 13, uh, and this is the Pro Max, has a rear-facing LiDAR uh, camera, which makes for improved 3D scans. Uh, in the previous version that I had, in the 11, only the front-facing camera, which is used for Face ID, had LiDAR, which is the technology used to kind of create a 3D topology of your face in order to make a Face ID print for your face. Now that they have that on the rear-facing camera, I wanted to see how that goes as far as the possibility for using the camera as a 3D scanning tool. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. I've grabbed a whole pile of 3D scanning apps, and you can see sort of the names of some of them here. Uh, the one we're going to be looking at today in particular is called Metascan. And they just came out with a new feature this week, so I'm going to click it. And right now, there's nothing in there. Now, there's two modes here. LiDAR scanning in general is interesting because, and you can see here that down the bottom, there's LiDAR mode and photo mode. And we're going to talk about the difference between those two. LiDAR mode is for really large-scale capturing when you're talking about these types of scanning tools because... It doesn't do very well with close-up detail, and it's really trying to capture broad set of information around the environment. So, for example, if I try to scan, try to scan my scully here, you can see I'm getting my skull, but I'm also getting, and you have to move, you have to move around, and as you're moving around you're running the risk of grabbing more and more information all around the room, let's say. And it works. There are a few of these types of tools available. But you can see I've got half my house captured in this. And what I really want is just my scully. So, you can see I've got a lot more than just the skull captured here. He's in there somewhere. And now I haven't finished the post-processing. This is just the initial capture. But you can see that I've got all these artifacts. And yeah, you can get in there and crop all this out and other things. But I wanted to try the, this new feature. I'm just going to delete that. There's a new feature called Photo Mode. Now, Photo Mode is interesting. Because photo mode actually takes still images. You have to take 20 still images. I had to think about how am I going to take 20 images. Now it works for a lot of uh, setups. And if you have a 3D scanning setup already, a lot of times what you have is sort of your scanning device or phone at a fixed position. You sort of rotate the object around. Take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, and then you have your 3D scanning object. So I'm going to try to create that here with this Lazy Susan I got from a thrift store for, I don't know, pennies probably, uh, that I just spray painted black. And I have one of these cloth tapes for fabric measured around the circumference here. And if you do that, I'm not going to do it now because, but in it, I went around like this, boom. Suffice it to say, it's 44 inches, 44 divided by 20 is 2.2, which is just about two and a quarter inches. Now, what I propose to do is every two and a quarter-ish inches or so, just put a little piece of just blue tape on this, and then I should have all of my locations to rotate this and stop it at even positions. Let's see if we can use the iPhone 13 Pro Max and this Metascan tool with photo mode to get ourselves an interesting skull model. 
I do not have a second tripod, so you'll have to excuse any camera shakiness. I did mark off 20 locations, roughly two and a quarter inches a piece. I'm just going to line up this blue marker with my tripod. It's kind of lousy. I can't really see what I'm taking a picture of, but okay. And now what I'm going to do is take a snap, turn, take a snap. Now we'll say done. We see all of our snapshots. The option I used was full detail and object masking. So first it does an upload and then it does a processing step. And we'll see what happens. What the app really wants you to do is to make a few passes around the object at different heights. What you need to do is get a pass all the way around low, move the camera up, take another pass. I did 20, 20, and a few. You're going to want to get all the way around. You're next. I'm going to 3D scan you. Yeah. And get all the way around so that you have a full sort of picture. It'll, it'll, it'll especially help in areas like this where this is sort of see-through, you're going to want to make sure you get a nice view all the way around the object of different heights, including top. Uh, I guess you can't really get bottom, but, uh, but then we can bring it into like a 3D program and clean it up. So I'm going to do that with my phone. I just wanted you to see what I'm doing because you can't really see it very well. If I could get my cat to sit on this, then I would scan him. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, so using the technique I described where you wanna take some circular images from different planes and make sure you get a nice top view. Ah, uh, here's another thing I think that'll be maybe handy if you're gonna try to set up some type of tooling to be able to repeat this. It's fine to do it once. You can probably just take your phone and, you know, take your phone and, uh, you know, move the object, snap, snap, snap. That's fine if you're doing it once. If you're looking to do this in a semi-regular way, not only did I find these tape markers very helpful, but I would advocate that you should use alternating colors. And I'll tell you why. The, the 20 granularity is probably important for some of your earlier scans. So down here when you're down low and you're scanning, you're probably going to want to have very small incremental changes to get all of this information. However, once you're up here, what I did was I went with every other marker and did 10 scans instead of 20. Uh, and then when I got to the top, I just made sure I did a full top view. I think I had a total of around 65 images. Mojo's very interested in this process, or maybe uninterested in this process. Hey, are you paying attention? I'm trying to teach you something. What the result is, boom, can you see that? This, I think, came out pretty cool. Looks almost like the real thing. There should be a sort of hollow point here. I might have to clean that up in like Mesh Mixer or Blender or something. But that is some really excellent detail that it captured. Especially all the surface and veining and things. I mean, this is pretty good. For 20 bucks a year, I think this tool is definitely one of the leading tools that I've tried. Can I export as? Hmm. I can export as an OBJ. Uh, it says FBX is used by most 3D software. All of the exports, you have to upgrade to Pro, except for USDZ, which is used by Apple devices. So maybe if you have another tool, I'll check. I haven't tried to import a USDZ 
file into Blender or Mesh Mixer. I've used OBJs and STLs. So it seems like, of course, they want you to upgrade to Pro. It's 20 bucks for the year. I think that's pretty reasonable. There's also a monthly subscription, which is $6.99 a month or $20 for the year. That's not. It's definitely a, a cost advantage to do the annual, for sure. Because uh, $6.99 a month is three months worth, and you'll have paid for the year. So, Metascan. I'm kind of digging it. I hope that helps someone. I'm going to try to get this into an export and then see if I can get it into a 3D tool, either Blender or Mesh Mixer, see if I can clean this up and print this out. Obviously, I already have one of these. I don't really need another one, but I'll, maybe I'll print its cousin, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, everybody, here we are. And I did... I was able to bring this into Blender and do some cleanup, and I'll, I'll cover the steps. So there is supposedly a plugin that seems to work best on a Mac for Blender, and it'll let you import USDZ files. Now, I did download that plugin, and there's some steps to get the plugin. It's on GitHub, I think, and then you can just grab it and install it and I did all those steps on Windows tried to use it it gave the appearance of working uh, and it did even have a object over here that said uh, the name of my object and sometimes these imports will import something so tiny that you have to select it and scale it up sort of many times the size I, I tried that I just could not get that import plug in to work. Now I'm using Windows. I hear people have much better success with it on a Mac. So I wanted to seek an alternative because it d didn't seem to be working for me. What I did was I found this free site that converts USD-Z to SDL. I'll, s I'll add this link in the description. And I just simply took my USD-Z file, added it here, converted it, downloaded it, imported it to Blender as an STL file. Now there was a considerable amount of uh, some of the bottom here and I just converted this to just converted this to a mesh and then simply just highlighted pieces. You'll want probably to be in x-ray mode so you can actually like select all the way through the model and then I just deleted all the chunks that I did not want and clean up the model. Once I got it cleaned up, I took it back over to, I exported it back to an STL file, and then I brought it over to Mesh Mixer. I simply used Mesh Mixer to close up this big hole in the bottom and make the object solid. So you go into Mesh Mixer, you click it. Uh, one of the modification tools is just simply called make solid uh, I accepted the accepted the defaults and then it made my model solid and so then brought it into Cura sliced it I think you know the drill from there and I printed it uh, so after I did that I ended up with my final model which I'll show you and here we are I would say that is a Pretty successful representation of the two items here, and and uh, you can, I'll give this get this a little closer so you can check it out. I used a new PLA that is a wood, has some wood in it, and pretty pleased with how it came out. It gives it a nice sort of textured look. Doesn't make it look sort of like shiny plastic. It almost feels like a almost feels like cardboard kind of, uh, but it does have a does have a texture to it. So, but anyway. Not too bad, considering considering we scanned this in with the phone and then pulled it into a few different pieces of software. Do you need more light on this? I think they came out all right. So hopefully this will help someone if you want to do your own scan. And like I said, I, I was trying to set something up that was a repeatable process, not kind of a one-off, which is why I um, set up this turntable and wanted to have something that I could place an object on and, and do this 
for a number of different objects. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. Like I said, the software that I used, Metascan, uh, at least it's available on iOS. It did take me a couple of tries to get used to the software, but here we are. I'm pretty pleased with this little, with this little skull. I think it came out awesome. I did print it, this with a couple of small tree supports. I think I used 80% for the, the for the threshold for supports. So it had a little support on the teeth, some supports on the cheeks, but uh, did not need to support the eyes or nose or anything. Not that that matters. You probably won't be printing the same skull, but it's good info anyway. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope this was interesting and helpful. See you next time.